Hi and welcome to Biostat Squid. I'm really happy to bring you part two of this tutorial series where we will go over the basic steps of pre-processing and quality checks of high throughput sequencing reads in R. If you haven't watched my previous video on quality control, do that since in this video we will just continue our journey to the amazing world of pre-processing and we will learn how to filter and trim reads. Let's dive in. So based on the results of the quality check, you might want to trim or filter the reads. The quality check might have shown the number of reads that have low quality scores. These reads will probably not align very well because of the potential mistakes in base calling or they may align to wrong places in the genome. Therefore, you may want to remove these reads from your FASTQ file. Another potential scenario is that parts of your reads need to be trimmed in order to align the reads. In some cases, adapters will be present in either side of the read. In other cases, technical errors will lead to decreasing base quality towards the ends of the reads, as we saw in the previous video. Both in these cases, the portion of the read should be trimmed so the read can better align the genome. The function we're going to use today is preprocess reads from the quas or package. So the function needs the input, so the fastq files, which if you remember, we already stored in the object chip file names. And then we need names for the output files. So we will use this temp file function, which will add this pattern processed one and processed two. Um, you can add any prefix you'd like. And then I will just add the whole file path also with the extension. So you can anyway run this bit by bit to see how the code works. So we can check all the possibilities we have to preprocess the reads by calling the help function on preprocess reads to know more. For example, we can match adapter sequences and remove them. We can remove low complexity reads, so reads containing repetitive sequences. We can trim the start or ends of the reads by a predefined length. We can filter the reads with a certain number of unidentified bases, which are represented by the N character, and many more options. In our case, we will just remove reads shorter than 10 base pairs and trim tree bases on the tree prime end, since they had quite bad quality scores, if you remember. We can also remove reads that have more than one unidentified base. And as you can see, we get a nice summary, which tells us how many sequences we removed and how many are left in the end. Great, so this function already offers you a lot of possibilities, but you might need something more. For example, the short read package has low level functions, which can filter reads in ways that are not possible using the preprocess reads function. For example, you might want to filter the reads where, the, where every quality score is below 20. In sequencing, base quality in DNA is usually measured by the FRED score. The more consistent the sequence base is, the higher the FRED score. A FRED score of 20 indicates the likelihood of finding one incorrect base call among 100 bases. In other words, the precision of the base call is 99%. So basically, we want to keep reads with a score equal or bigger than 20. Okay, so this little bit of code is a bit more advanced than running straight lines of code, but we're going to go step by step. So the problem is that FASTQ files can be quite large, so it might not be feasible to read a 30 gigabyte file into memory. A more memory efficient way would be to read the file piece by piece. And we can do our filtering operations for each piece, write the filtered part out and read a new piece. Fortunately, this is possible using the short read fastq streamer function. This function enables streaming the fastq file in pieces, which are just blocks of the fastq file with a predefined number of reads. So first, let's just 
take a fast Q file and we had our fast Q files here, but fast Q files contains um, two files. So let's just take the first one first. You could also just add the name of the file here and it would work too. So fastq files one is just the first file and we will assign it to the fastq file object. Now the fastq uh, streamer will take this and we also need to define the reader block size. So in this case, we will read the file in bits of a thousand reads. Now we can access the successive blocks with the yield function. So each time we call the yield function, after opening the fastq file with fastq streamer, a new part of the file will be read into memory. So this is the basic structure and whatever we put in here inside the while function will be done repeatedly for every block of the file. But wait a minute, we have two files. We could just assign fastq file to the first object, run this, and then the second and run it again. But if you have multiple files, this might be a bit tedious to do manually. So we will just put all of this inside a for loop, which will go through all of the fastq files. So instead of the name of a single file, we will loop through the fastq files object, which if you remember, contains the name of our two files. So the first time it goes through the loop, i will be equal to one. So then fastq file will take the first element of the fastq files vector. We can print it out to see if it works. So right now we have the first element um, assigned to this fastq file. And now the fastq streamer part combined with the yield function will allow us to take little pieces of that file and inside the while we will have our filtering operations. And once it finishes with that file, it will go back to our for loop and I will take a value of two. In this case, it's the last value it will take. And so it will repeat everything again. So now if we print fastq file, it takes the second value. So we will comment this out. This was just for debugging and to show you how it works, but this is how the for loop will work. And now for the actual filtering part. So we said we want to remove reads where all quality scores are lower than 20. So we will first get the quality scores uh, per base as a matrix. This is the first step. Then we get the number of bases per read that have a quality score bigger or smaller than 20. So with this function, we're summing um, row wise. So for every read, we're summing the number of bases that have a quality per base lower than 20. Now we can check how many reads have all FRED scores bigger or equal to 20. Since this is inside the for loop, it will not print it out. So we can just add this print function to print it out. And we can also add this cool print part, which basically just prints out a message telling us what it's going to print. I'll show you uh, just in just a second when we run it. Now we need to write a new filtered fastq file, which only contains reads where all the quality scores are bigger or equal to 20. So we do this with the write fastq function. And here I'm defining the actual file I am writing, which is our filtered fastq file. Then we have the name for that file. And since we're inside a for loop, we can't just write, um, for example, um, fast q file filtered, which would be a valid name or whatever you want. And you could just add it here. But since we're inside a loop, we cannot do that because then every time it runs through the loop, it will overwrite the new file with the old file because they all have the same name. So what we do is we will take the fastq file name. Uh, remember, it can either be uh, this one or this one in this case, and just add q filtered at the end. You can add any uh, suffix you want. If you play around with this, you will realize we need to first remove the file extension name um, from the original file name 
and then add it again at the end. Um, otherwise, our file won't be written in a fast queue format because the file name will just have queue filtered at the end instead of the extension name. Anyways, important to set the mode to A so that everything inside the while function, so the little pieces of our fast queue file, are written out to the same file. Nice. Okay, so this was a bit more complicated, but this structure would be a basic scaffold, let's say, that would allow you to set up a nice pipeline if you want to go through many FASTQ files. So if you have additional filtering steps, you would just uh, add them here before the write FASTQ function, and that would work nicely. So let's just run this to see how it works. Um, great, there's an error. Let's see. Right, we forgot to assign f to the fastq object. So first we read the file, which is here, f, and then we take little pieces of that file and assign them to fq. Let's see again. Now it works. And this is what I meant. So it's printing out the number of reads with all FRED scores, uh, bigger or equal to 20 for file chip uh, for this file. And then it prints out the number of reads and the maximum length. Squidtastic. Thank you for watching. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial. I really hope it was helpful. And thank you all for your comments and support. Have a squidtastic day and see you in the next one.